Hi everybody, I'm Sean and today I'm going to go over how to create a simple Angular Ionic application and how to incorporate some ArcGIS features into it. We'll dive right into the tools required for this. You'll need whatever code editor you like to use, Angular and Node.js downloaded. We'll move right into the documentation. After heading over to Ionic Angular's documentation, you can see that we need to run npm install Ionic CLI native run Cordova Res. This allows us to easily create a new repository using the command line interface. These applications always take a little while to build, so I'll see you back here when it's ready. Welcome back. Now we can dive into some of the repository. As you can see, the command line interface we used created quite an organized repo for us. We have a lot of files here, but we only need to focus on a couple. I'm just running through them to show you what's inside of each file. I'm going to go ahead and install some additional dependencies just in case we decide to take this app a little bit further. Looks like that capacitor storage is complete. Now let's go ahead and add the Ionic PWA element for the camera. After getting that installed, we're going to go ahead and add the specified elements to our main.ts file. Now that all of that's done, we can finally view the application. Let's go ahead and run Ionic Serve to view what has been created for us. The rest of the guide shows you how to set up a photo gallery application, but we're going to pivot off of that so I can teach you a little bit about ArcGIS. Now that our app's loaded, I'm going to go ahead and inspect the page so we can get our developer tools visible. As you can see, we're loading this on an iPhone X. We're given a pretty basic starter template that has three tabs for navigation at the bottom. I'm going to also install another dependency that allows our Esri types to be defined. I did work on this repo a little bit already. I added some mock data for us to use. As you can see, I have a simple JSON object with key value pairs longitude and latitude. After closing the sample data folder, let's go ahead and take a look at tab 1. Because I've worked on this already, I already have a couple of imports at the top. I've also built out most of the map functionality, so I'm going to be walking through it with you so you understand how it all works. This step does look a little confusing, but we're only importing Esri types here from what we just downloaded using the CLI. If you don't know what some of these components mean, I definitely suggest looking up an Angular tutorial to get you familiar with them. I will be talking my way through some of the base functionality of the app. Here, you can see we have an output and a view child component. These allow the Esri map loader to talk with the JavaScript Angular app that we're creating. You can see we have the map view element, which is how we're going to be loading the child component. If you look up here, we have a variable named base map. This loads a specified map type from ArcGIS online. We're going to be using streets for the sake of this video and because, as you can see on the right, it's very easy to read. You're able to set specific variables on every map you load. For these map properties, we're setting the container to the map view element, which is the child component that we saw earlier. We're also able to set center, zoom, and the map to this dot map. Other variables we're able to set are the specific view. We set the view to the Esri map view component listed above, and then we added the map view properties to initialize the map. When we look at the HTML page, we can see that there's quite a lot going on here. Not only are there Angular items, there's also Ionic items. You see that we have Ion list headers, ion list, ion labels, and more. What I wanted to do here is create a radio button that allows the users to select what type of map they want to see, or shall I say, what layer they want to see on the map. 
The options I've created are states, state capital, and population density. Right here I'm showing the map view node module that we created to load the Esri map. Now we're going to be taking a look at the change layer function. This allows you to load specific elements into each layer that you want to view and then display them on the Angular Ionic web page. We're using the ng model change and model to reference all of these values and dynamically render the map based on those. As you can see, we're setting up a point variable and a marker symbol. The type is point, the longitude and the latitude are how the value is going to get plotted on the map. Now we have the simple marker symbol and we're setting that type to be a simple marker. We're setting the colors of it and an outline of it with a width of three. If you look on the map, you can see that these values are directly represented by each point. The point graphic is being used to plot every individual point and then it is added to the data layer. We're using the pointer marker symbol to define how we want to display the points on the layer. The last step is of course adding that point to the layer itself which we do with the graphic layer add function. Every layer we create uses the same methodology to build out each individual point. I set up some basic conditionals for capitals, states, and population density. The states JSON object doesn't necessarily display any relevant information. However, it does plot a different set of points than the state capitals JSON object. If we look back at the city by population, we're able to see that we have access to a couple additional key value pairs, one of which I'm using in the size variable. We take the population value to determine what size we want the point to be. That's how we're able to increase the size of the point based on the total population. The next thing we're going to look up is ArcGIS web maps. These are unique because they take little to no setup and they allow users to share whatever graphics they want to. They're also able to display certain pop-ups. For instance, in this one, you can see that the radius of the circle is present in multiple states. We're gonna go ahead and move on to Esri's library of maps, apps, and more. Going into the tab two HTML, you can see it looks very similar to our other one, except because we're loading a web app, we don't have to have any of the functionality on our local machine. The setup is very similar as well. Scrolling down through this documentation, you can see that one of the only differences is that we're using a web map and loading that as the map instead of using a static base map. You can see inside of this web map, we have an ID value. Now, if we go over to our ArcGIS website, we can see that there are a lot of different items we can select from. I'm gonna go ahead and load the map that we're using in our application right now so you can see what it's all about. You can see that this map shows population age 65 and up in the United States. Using the ID from the URL, we're able to grab any web map we want quickly and easily. I'll do it right now. We simply copy and paste this link. And now we're able to view the web map with all its functionality. Today, we went over the basics of how to set up an Angular Ionic application that utilizes Esri Loader for ArcGIS functionality. Drop a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you don't want to miss any more GeoMarvel Live videos. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next video.